on my website, Mitchell History Notes, I have links to the aerial photos that are available on Stark Human's website. They are bird's eye type photos, in as much as they are taken at an angle, which is good because then you can see the shape of buildings and the lettering on the side of factories and so forth. With nearly 100 photos, I've grouped them into areas. So let's start with Benedict Road Industry. For two years, 1937 to 1947. Under 1937, there are seven videos. Seven of the first one. It says at the bottom, an industrial site to the southern end of Benedict Road, Mitchum 1937. This image has been produced from a damaged negative. Flown 6th of September 1937. Yes, it is damaged, but we've got some detail. Let's look at the damaged area first. On the right hand side, we can see the green surrounded by the houses of Deer Park Gardens. And so beyond that, Morland Hall Park, and there's a footpath at the back of those houses that leads from what is now a Fipswich tram stop to the Morland Road. Be in that bit there, and at the entrance coming into Deer Park Gardens, here we see on the left, but if you can go all the road, be on the right, is this building of shops at the front and flats above, and this circular stairwell at that end is one of the reasons why that building is now locally listed. Across the road from there, this building no longer exists, it's a proper flat. The base in the corner was the Ravensbury Tavern pub. Let's move uh, up Morden Road. We can see some industry. Electric meters, them is it. But, I beg your pardon, British electric meters, them is it. And on the other side of the road, Pancock Caulfield, which is a factory that made show cards and things, advertising theme. I can go to my website and show you some of their products. Bangkok, Corfield and Wooler. Imperial Works on Water Road. Litho printing on steel and metal sheet processing, which is what was recorded in the 1963 borough of the Mitchell list of factories. From this article, from a website called Brewery Trays, go you play. Oh, I had it before the link stopped working. During the Great War, business was interrupted. Much of HCW and Cop Coffield War business continued. Success during this period was not due to train manufacturing. Metal printing was put on hold, and for the next four years, the Imperial Works produced millions of items for the British forces. One of the biggest successes in HCW Limited's speciality water bottles, which were pressed on the machines that previously produced show cards and, and waiter trays. These same bottles were then covered in car key by the factory's considerable female labour force, who became disrespectfully known as the Sunning Party. There's an entry on Grace's Guide to British Industrial History. From the 1914 edition of Who's Home in Business, Established 23 years ago, from 1914. So that's... 
Are you too noisy, why? To take over the patent rights from the Embossed Metal Tablet Company of Grayson Road, EC. For printing and embossing metal for advertising purposes. And in 1904, acquired the business of Messrs. Wah Willis and Company, Color Printers. Incorporated as a private limited company. Directors, John Caulfield, Managing Director, Reginald Caulfield. William Henry Wah. Premises, large factory with forage. Covering about three acres at the Imperial Works, Morton Road, Mitcham. Staff 300. Specialities artistic colour printing on metal, aluminium and paper, steel, iron, tin, zinc, etc. Our manufacturers of embossed iron advertisement tablets, general printing and lithography are well known for the excellence of their work before the introduction of novelties in design. Specialise in all advertising novelties. So the back address, Corfield, Plummer, Mitchum. Imperial War Museum, it's an online collection. These links still work? Yes. There we go. I'd like to for what is beer in the Imperial War Museum. And Dunlop cycle tires. Oh, you mean Dunlop's that? Interesting, never heard this from. Really, back to the photo. So now we have here this railway line which we know to be today the route of the train link. And the thing to bear in mind about this railway line, there are a number of sidings which gives the name Benedict Wharf. We used to think a wharf was just a place for unloading and loading ships at a riverside in the docks. But it does actually apply in the land as well for the same purpose. Loading and unloading of supplies and sidings. And there's a factory in the foreground. Let's see if we can find a better version, a better view. Second one. Oh, yeah, this is now concentrating on the actual factory in Benedict's road area. But let's have a look at this before we try and remember what we were doing earlier on about the hang We'll come back to that. It's a much better photo later on. This green space is, today, gone in my pile built. This is where our houses down at the bottom. Here's the end of Church Path, as from Church Road End. And this row of houses, this terrace, is Maple Terrace. And here are my gardens. Where is washing out? But, um... Oh, and here we go. Here's the name of the business. Lancaster and Company Mitchell and Limited. Haulage contractors, motor and general engineers. Some wagons here. And this company I think we could see the name of it on another slide. Let's go for another slide. Um, and this looks similar, a bit further out. Seven, 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 eight. Hmm. Okay, so this now looks like a much better version of the photograph we first saw. Let's go back and look at Hayne Cop. Caulfield and Waller. Yes, you can actually. I know actually see that. Crane Cop, Caulfield and Waller. Oh, there actually says what they do. Show cars, cutouts, and novelties. Quite a big business. Oh, sorry. Let's try again.
color printers, metal, paper, posters, show cards, cutouts, and old hoops. I would say that's the Morgan Road leading towards Mitchum Station. It's got to be Ravensbury Park over there. Oh, that's quite a big patchy area. And this building, as we saw earlier, we can read a bit better now. The British Electric Meters Limited. There's a lot of sidings on wagons. I'll include a map next. Let's have a look at a map. This is a this is a map from nineteen fifty two, published in nineteen fifty three. There's the railway line and the various sidings coming up of it. That's the footbridge. There's Deer Park Gardens. And it's entrance down here. That's the row of shops and flats with that circular stairwell that we saw. Gas meter factory. Also the Mitchum Model Bakery. Engineering works at the Morgan Road. And this is the rubber works. Quite a bit, is anyway. There's the Ravensbury Tavern, public house on that corner, like I said, and Ravensbury Grove. These houses are not all in the photograph we were looking at. Or were they? Let's go back to it. Home gardens. Sure. Could be. That building there, that's a central building. Terrace, could be that terrace. And those groups of houses. How many houses have we got here? Is that. Yeah, mm -hmm. two lots of four. And there's a gap. We'll say this is a 1937 photo, and this is a 1952 map, so other buildings have been built. Structures have been erected. And bad grammar, so buildings have been built. Sorry about that. And this footbridge, very old footbridge, was identified on the map as being Ravensbury Perth. And interestingly enough, can actually see the steps on the side of this bridge. You can compare it here against that photo. We're in good piece of detail. So that's some um, that's over a railway line of sidings. And sidings and we're on a line. Very good. And the bottom, the park at the bottom is the London Road playing fields, and over here is my terrace at the end of the church. Cool. So these buildings was these buildings were Lancaster haulage contractors. See how I've got something about them. Blake has to go to score got them got them. Yes. There we go. I guess they're in company, which one did. This is an advertisement from nineteen fourteen. Glad is it can wolf to a tray. And these these are these are combs. Kinds of steam coals, Welsh, anthracite, etc., for manufacturing purposes. 
back to the home side. I thought I saw when I was looking at these before. The name of this factory is next to it. Let's go to 278, let's go to 279, see what view this gives us. I like this view. I like it because it shows the parish church and the churchyard, church road. I'll move off over there for a minute. It's church. I don't know what this was. I just really looked that up, didn't I? This row of houses is John's place in Church Park, which leads down to the factory. And this row of houses set back slightly than the John's place. This is local terrace. And this spans here. Well, this building is the Mickeridge. Yeah, it's quite a nice bit of space. And then this row is Vicarage Gardens with houses there where the current vicar lives i think um and across the road we can actually see where that part of the church will curves around into the blade and it's a yarn and old shops and all buildings. This building is still there. That's um, listed. And these buildings are there as well, aren't they? No flats there. There's no only shops along this road. And this is the Bull Pub, Young's Pub. And next to that. The entrance to this yard, the council yard, which leads on to Love Lane. I think there was an entrance into Love Lane because you can still see the outline of the entrance if when you walk down Love Lane now, the wall is there and the heat appears. I think that was the police block. Um, the, you know, like, um, police accommodations. But anyway. That's uh, so a love lane. From which then becomes a path around the corner. The side of the cemetery. Ooh, you can at least see the contrary memorandum there. That's a World War One memorial, but it doesn't have any names on it, as opposed to the memorial down by the old fire station at the Lower Green West, which has uh, the names. Um, fallen, including two of my great uncles from that one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to talk about this thing here. This is a row of houses which no longer exist. This area from Church Road, where the where bend is, and through where the factories were, is there Hallowed Field Way. And these houses were compulsory purchased and demolished to make way for the road which was going to connect church roads to Warner Road. That connection never happened. And so that's why you have quite a wide road there now. But tell the council, because they'll build the block of hats there. Um, and this is a part of the Star School or the Lermichon School. And there are those wagons we saw in a earlier photograph from a different angle. All right, that's 279. Let's have a look at the next one. 280. Whoa. This is also good. Because the wide angle here, the, the basis of these photos is to show you the 
battery in the industrial part of Benedict Road. If you look at the back, there's a cricket green over there. But there's an industry called. Now, so that's the old cricketers pub, because this is low T37 before the World Cricket was pub was hit by um, a bomb, courtesy of the Wacko. And, well, the story goes actually the bomb fell between the vestry hall and, and the pub that uh, Montague refers to in his um, history book. And um, the, it was a parachute mine, and apparently they had time to put some um, sandbags up to protect the town hall. So when it blew up, they destroyed the pub. Some might argue that they got it around the wrong way, but there you go. Uh, so there's a cricket pitch. You can see the other cricket green road on the other side. Oh, and you can see the burnt book. And therefore, that's the pavilion, and therefore that's the house called Greenview where the president of the Cricket Club lived for a period of time. This building no longer exists, replaced by the job centre. That's where Leo's ice cream shop. And curiously enough, this very narrow road here, I can't see how narrow it is, but it was pretty narrow. It was called the Broadway. Strange. Anyway, this is Broadway Gardens because it was built off of the Broadway. But this part here, this this road which leads to these houses, is also called Church Path, and it is actually a footpath along the edge of the playing fields, past the vicarage, down to the road called Church Path, which leads up the Church Road. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, it's fine, though. And the factory area again. Yeah, so it's all done on the same nose, and it leads us different views from the same aircraft. On the on the sixth of September, nineteen twenty-seven. One more to go. Two eight one. View is this. Here we have this try of the London Road play fields again. It's slightly to the right to where we just were. So as I'm getting bored with this factory area now, let's go and see what else we can see. Looks like allotments there. Opposite that old house there. Is that um, is that where the uh pool place Right, so anyway, there's there's some um, Vicarage Gardens. Which is a bit more. The ball pub, the entrance to the council yard. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, that is Hall Plates, that building there. Ah. That's handy. I wouldn't have noticed that if I hadn't noticed it, if you see what I mean. So there's nothing left of that house there. Why have they got these things now? There's the arch, the stone archway for the chapel is still there in the grounds. So that's where Baronet Sir Cato Warsfold lived. It's not bad for, is it? Very good. But that's 1937. The next video, we'll do the same stuff for 1947, the same kind of area. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. They always say that, don't they? I think I should do as well. If you like my videos, don't forget to like them and subscribe to the channel.